God the great weatherman. Hallelujah. They try to protect, Lord, but you orchestrate this weather, oh God. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything up until today, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for how you carried us through the week. Lord, how you kept our minds, oh God. You kept our minds, oh God. Because somebody woke up without a mind this morning, oh God, to know that they are even yet in this world, oh God. Well, we thank you not only for having a mind, Lord, but a mind to serve you. Lord, to know that you are our one true hope. You are our Savior, hallelujah. Oh Lord, that we can do nothing without you, oh God. Without you, Lord, we are nothing and we can do nothing, oh God. We give you all the glory, hallelujah, for just being the God of our salvation, oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh God, we just thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we just thank you, we thank you, we thank you, hallelujah. Lord, we ask that you remove those things in us, hallelujah, that are not like you, Lord. Those things that come to disrupt and disturb, oh God, we ask that you replace it with love and with kindness, with meekness, with gentleness, hallelujah. Lord, increasing our faith in you ever the more, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, we just ask that you bless this service on today, oh God. Bless every service that is open in your name, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, we ask that you anoint our speaker on this morning, oh God. Give that person what to say to your people, oh God. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you for the members here at St. Timothy, oh God. The love and the family and the unity, God, that we have. Lord, it's only you, oh God. We take no credit for it, God, but it is you. Hallelujah. All the gifts that operate in our church, oh God, it is through you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just ask, hallelujah, that you look on the sick, the bereaved, the hurting, hallelujah, the backstab, the backsliders, the, the unsaved, oh God. Lord, they need to hear your word on today. Hallelujah, that it may penetrate that old stony heart. Hallelujah, that it become a heart of flesh, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the praise, the honor, the glory. Lord, be in everything that we say, everything we do, every song that is sung, every scripture that is read. Hallelujah, every hallelujah, every thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, we just ask that you be in it all, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you at this time, oh God.
Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet and praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him, oh Lord, praise him. We'll just go down, I just ended it. But everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. doing the statement of faith. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We affirm our faith in God. We believe that there is one God, eternally existence in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We believe in the blessed hope which is in the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe in the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believing in prayer. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2 and 4 is given to believers who ask for it. We affirm our faith in the sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. And this is what we believe. We are singing today's hymn, If It Had Not Been For The Lord On Our Side. How many know that you don't really know where you would be? If it had not been for him. If it had not been for the Lord on my
question where would we be if it had not been for God amen and I'm just here to give our announcements and uh just truly thanking and praising God amen not only for being here today for being out in the house of the Lord just one more time but just being in the land of the living being able to come out to the house of the Lord hallelujah to be in God's presence just to be able, hallelujah, to be here to lift my voice up. I don't care who sees me over here doing my ugly cry. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I bless your name. I came here today, hallelujah, to praise your name, God. I came here today, God, to give you glory, amen. I came to clap my hands and I came to do my thing. I remember because if we all think about it, there was a time when we were not able to come out into the house of the Lord. We could not pray God as we wanted to. And I tell you, I was at work sometimes and I'm watching live on Facebook. It is not the same because I want to be free to lift my voice. I want to be free to shout. It's time to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why I'm so excited on Sundays when I get to come out. Hallelujah, just be in his presence. God has done so much for me. I tell you on that job when I was working 12-hour days, Sundays, every other Sunday, I didn't like that. You think I don't like coming out and being in the house of the Lord? And then 12-hour Sunday nights when I tell you God is good, I am here. Hallelujah, and I can praise God the way that I want to, amen. Just being in his presence, amen. And I tell you here at uh, St. Timothy Tabernacle, our address is 2407 North Columbia Avenue. Our pastor is Elder Ordy Edwards Sr. And our first lady, also our district missionary, amen, is First Lady Leilani Edwards, amen. And so we just give God praise and glory and thanks to his name for all things. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to give not only our weekly announcements, but I am also going to give our upcoming announcements. So this is the part where I'm going to take my time so you can get your pen out, get your paper out, and get ready to write some things down. If you like me, you need to write some things down and take some notes because these days, they're quickly coming and going, amen? And if you plan to be in the number, if you want to be in attendance, sometimes you got to write these things down, amen? Sometimes you got to put this on the calendar. You know, we, we think we can remember what's coming up next week, but we want to make sure we know what we know. Amen. So here at St. Timothy on Sunday, we have our Sunday school hour at 11 a.m. And though we are not live on Facebook, amen, we do invite you all to come and be in the sanctuary. Just come and be out, amen, in the house of the Lord. This is your time, amen, to come and ask your questions. This is a time for you to get an understanding of God's word. Because as Sister Robin says, when the preach word is going forth, we can't raise our hand. Uh, Pastor, um, what did you mean? What did you say? What scripture was that? We we can't ask those questions as the preach word is going forth but you all can come out to Sunday school and get an understanding of God's word because even in God's word he told us in all our getting that we are to get an understanding amen amen so we invite you to come out on Sunday school and so say at 11 o'clock you can't make it but right after Sunday school this is where we go into the best part of the service so you all can attend live and even in the sanctuary you can attend live on Facebook or even in the sanctuary for our Sunday worship service and that starts right after Sunday school and this is where we come amen this is the 
best part of the service because this is where we hear the preached word of God. Amen. And then to say you can't attend on Sundays, maybe you were like me, have to work 12-hour days, 12-hour nights, but you can come on Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m., amen? And that is our prayer and Bible band hour, amen? So you can be live on Facebook or you can still be live in the sanctuary, amen? And then on Friday nights, yes, we have our Friday night service at 7.30 p.m. However, this Friday night, hallelujah, you all say Timothy Choir, hallelujah, is going to have our fall concert. to miss this upcoming fall concert just come out amen to saint timothy if you come out for no other reason come out to give god glory that's what we should be doing but also come out and show your support amen come out and lift up the name of jesus amen Live, we, we're going to be, you all, I'm telling you, I'm so excited just to come out and be in the concert, but just to lift your voice, hallelujah, to the Lord and let him know how much we love him. Let him know how much we adore him. Let him know that we cannot live without him. So we're going to come and give him glory on that night. Amen. And that again is this Friday night, October the 14th. Yes, it is October the 14th already, and that will be our fall concert right here at St. Timothy Tabernacle. Amen? Amen. All right, now moving on down, we have some other announcements. This is why I want you to get your pen and your papers out so you can write this down, and then that way you can make preparations to be in attendance. So on Sunday, October the 23rd, our First Lady, amen, will be the speaker at Serenity, the Prince of Peace at 4 o'clock p.m. So we are all, amen, want to come and show our support, amen, not only to Serenity, the Prince of Peace, amen, but to our own First Lady who will be the speaker of the hour. And that is going to be Sunday, October the 23rd at 4 p.m. All right, now moving down just a little further, amen. So we're back at another Friday night on October the 28th. This is uh, St. Timothy Tabernacle. We have been invited to the Bread of Life, amen. And that service will be Friday night at 7 p.m., amen. So we are asking for each and every one of us here, amen, at St. Timothy to be, to make our preparations to be in the number, but also for you on Facebook Live to come out and hear the word of the Lord. Lord. Amen. And we're just going to um, make preparations. Amen. Just to be there. And that is October the 28th. That's going to be on a Friday night. We will be at the Bread of Life starting at 7 p.m. Amen. Now going down one more thing. The last thing that we have on our agenda for October. I know October is really a busy month. Amen. But we are busy for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So Sunday, October the 30th, here at St. Timothy Tabernacle, we are going to have our family and friends night at 4 o'clock p.m. Amen. So not only, amen, are we asking for St. Timothy, amen, to come out and be here and be in the number, but we are asking our family and our friends and, of course, as always, our Facebook viewers to come out and join us for our family and friends night, and that is going to be here on uh, Sunday, October the 30th, and our service that night will start at 4 p.m., amen? And we are going to announce these uh, announcements weekly as they come up because we all want you to know what's going on so you can make preparations to attend amen amen and now here is another best part of the service so you say oh well i can't make it on sunday i can't make it on tuesday i can't make it on friday oh i got something else to do next week but you know what one part of the service that you can always participate in is the ministry of giving amen and when we give we are going to give with a cheerful heart because god loves a cheerful giver so as you're giving just get your mind prepared you are giving as unto the lord amen and we know that no matter how much we give no matter how much we do we 
cannot be God's given. Hallelujah. And for that, we thank God because he, you know what? He loves us so much. He can bless us more and abundantly than what we can even ask or ever think. And we just cannot be his given. Amen. But you all can participate in the ministry of giving. And there are several ways that you can give. One, if you want to give and you're not comfortable with giving with, uh, through electrical ways, amen, through electronics, amen, you can come into the sanctuary, be here in person, and you can give your offering that way. Another way that you can give is through our cash app, amen, and it's dollar sign St. Timothy 2407, and um, you can give whatever amount that the Lord put on your heart to give, and then another way that you can give is through Giveify. If you already have the app downloaded on your phone, amen, you just go to Giveify, make sure you get the right church name and the right address so your monies will be received right here at St. Timothy, amen, and then you just let the Lord lead you into how much amen he puts on your heart to give and I'm telling you giving to the ministry is just that easy amen amen and so I'm telling you you all you want to come out be a part of the service and right now this is a part of the service that we all want to be a part of a part of the service amen where we can lift our voices and give God the glory amen we are coming into the praise and worship team amen by our own sister Sierra. Amen. Let's say amen for our praise and worship. And you all that's here in the sanctuary, stand up, stand to your feet. Even you that are at home, we are going to give God the praise of today. Amen. Stand up and give him glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, no. 
serve a God who knows you. Yeah. He knows exactly what you need. Yeah. He knows when you hurt. He knows when you need healing. He knows everything about you. And that's why we want him to be in our presence. Yes. Yes. There's something about the spirit of the Lord. When we are in yes. his presence, he is literally everything we need him to be to us. Yes. And that's why we ask him to come into the sanctuary. That's why we set this atmosphere. Because he is worthy of the praise. We want his presence with us. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we? say that. I just want to be with you. Come and sing King of Glory. King of Glory. Feel me. I just want to. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. just want to be with you. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. We're back. Let's start right now. Why would, why would we wait? We can praise you. We can praise you now. In victory. In victory. Say King of glory. King of glory. Feel this. Just wanna, just wanna be with you. With you, just wanna be. Come on, set the atmosphere. When you wanna be with them, you acknowledge them, King.
Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God declares that in his presence, this is my favorite scripture, is the fullness of joy. How many need the joy of the Lord? Amen. How many need the strength of the Lord? Amen. In his presence. Amen. That's the song. In, uh, King of glory, fill this place, this inhabitation. Amen. This body. Amen. Amen. We want the Lord to do Amen. What he does best. Amen. And so we just invite him in. And I want us to just, I don't, you don't have to stand. If you want to stand, you can. But I just want you just to meditate on the goodness of God. Amen. And what you need from the Lord. Hallelujah. In his presence, there's everything you need. There's healing. There's deliverance. Hallelujah. So I just want us to take one minute. Amen. To get out of the way. Amen. Get out of, amen, yourself. Get out of yourself. Amen. And just go into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you on today. Lord, we worship you for who you are. Lord, we worship you for who you are. You're Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're our help. You're our hope. Hallelujah. We depend on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise we could ever give to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you on today. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the peace giver. Hallelujah. You give us peace. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as you praise God, hallelujah, he steps in and meets your need. He steps right in that situation. Hallelujah. That thing that's on your mind that is burdening you right now, God can just lift it and take it off of you hallelujah all you have to do is what just give it to him but you got to give it to him in his presence come on give it to him hallelujah that thing that's been worrying you that thing that's been on your mind that family issue that friendship that relationship give it over to the lord hallelujah cast it on him for he cares for you he cares for you hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have everything I need in his presence. Because he is the great 
I am. Hallelujah. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, you have everything you need in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother Grace, you have everything you need in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, saints. Come on. There's a place we need to go. There's a place we need to go. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 That financial situation. Hallelujah. God is working it out. Hallelujah. But you got to get in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Throw caution to the wind and praise God. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Amen. Sometimes this is unconventional. Hallelujah. But hey, he deserves the glory. He deserves all of the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been through things all week long. Amen. And we can, we can just take a few minutes. Amen. To worship the Lord. Amen. To praise his name. Amen. Every day that you wake up. Amen. I want you to think about it. Every day that you wake up, he's giving you breath in your body. Hallelujah. He's giving you the activities of your limbs. Hallelujah. I look at Mother Bird. Amen. My grandmother. How the Lord blessed her and touched her body. Hallelujah. Amen. It could have been a whole nother situation. Amen. It could have been a whole nother thing. But God spared her life. Amen. And I want you to look back over your life. And reflect on the many things that God has done for you. Amen. You got, you got no other choice but to praise his name. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Amen. We praise the Lord. Amen. As we in this vein, I want you to still worship the Lord. Amen. We're going to receive our, amen, our pastor. Amen. The man of God. Amen. With faith and power. Amen. He is one that is anointed by God to preach the gospel. Amen. And I believe, amen, as we continue to praise God in his presence, amen, the word of God is going forth. Amen. Our Sunday school lesson was talking about the word of God going forth. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for our pastor. Amen. Let us all stand and receive God's man. Amen. Pastor Ortney Edwards Sr. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power to, to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty, for the Lord our God is omnipotent, for the Lord our
eternal Father, him, we thank you. We thank you for being mercy and kind. We thank you for allowing us to see this day. We thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for, oh God, the word on today, Lord God. We thank you for the worship service on today. We thank you for your presence being in this sanctuary, Lord God. Now, Lord, saturate this place with your presence, Lord God. Touch the hearts and soul, your mind, of people here in this sanctuary, Lord God. As well on Facebook, Lord God. Send your word forth and deliverance power go forth in Jesus' name. Deliver, set free the captive on every hand. Bind the adversary on every hand by the spirit of the living God. Lord, touch us now, God, and deliver right now, God. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do, God. And we're going to give you the glory and the honor and the praise that is due your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. I thank God today. And I thank God for the, the praise and praise and worship leaders on today. Thank God for them. And I thank God for our introduction to our, our speaker, Ella Lord, and the Edwards Union. We have to recognize that it is God that has allowed us to be here. Amen. Uh, we didn't wake ourselves up. We didn't wake ourselves up. And the alarm clock didn't wake you up. But it was the Lord that allowed you to what? Hear. Because if the Lord didn't allow you to hear, you wouldn't be here. So we thank God for everyone that's here. We do give honor to the Spirit of the Lord today and to the Son Jesus Christ who had my life. To the elder on the roster, to First Lady Edwards, to our church mother, to our co-founder, Mother Glenn, uh, to our Sunday school tenant in our absence, Mother, Mother Rosie Field, to all the people of God, amen. But I thank God for being here today, being saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost of Fire. Do speak another tongue, the Spirit Lord give utterance. Thank God for the opportunity to be here in your presence, amen. But we're going to get the word of God. I want you to get your Bibles. And it's important for you to read the Bible, amen? Yes. Not just read it, your read it when you want to read it, but it's important that when you're in the sanctuary that you open your Bible, you just, your, your, even if it's your tablet or your phone, amen? For you to open your Bible and say, you know, so you see it for yourself, yes. what's being said, amen? Because if I'm just telling you something, you see you go right ahead with it, but when you read it yourself, it gets down on the inside, doesn't it? Got a few amens, but we're going to continue on. We're going to the, the 107th division of the Psalms. Amen. We have to say amen. amen. It said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes. for his mercy endureth forever. Yes, yes. See, that's point of the psalmist that David wrote. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And that's something that we ought to always give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. For he is good. And for his mercy, what? His mercy endure forever. Which means God's compassion has endured forever. Because there's a time that we recognize that if it was not for the Lord on our side, that someone said, if it was not for God on our side, where would we be? Because the enemy desired to take us out. But God allowed him to stay his hand. Because it was only God that allowed him to do it. But when God said, stay in place. Don't go no further than what you did. Because it's God's mercy and his compassion for me and for you. Amen. To let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Who the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. When you think about redeem, redeem means what? Amen. Redeem means to redemption, to refer to the deliverance of Christians from sins. Redeem, the redeem is fine as buy or get something back or pay off a loan. And then exchange for one another comfort or convert it into cash. When you think about redeem, Jesus Christ redeemed us. Amen. And if it was not for him that redeemed us, we would be in what? We would be in bad shape. Because he redeemed us from the hands of the enemy. But as David began to talk about how the Lord has redeemed, this is talking about Israel. God redeemed Israel because the enemy 
was decided to destroy in Israel. Let the redeemed of the Lord. So if you redeem, you should say so. Nobody had to tell you to say, but you are, if you redeem, you bought with a price. You were bought with a price. He redeemed you from the enemy. Because the enemy thought you was nothing at all. But because of his precious blood of Jesus Christ, he redeemed me and you. Yes. He shed his blood for me and for you. Yes. So when I think about, we have to the redeem the one that been bought with a price. Yes. Has to say, you have to, you have to open your mouth and say you've been redeemed. Because yes. if you don't say you're redeemed, then you're not redeemed at all. Mm. But he already paid the blood, he already paid the price already. Yes. He already shed the blood already. He don't have to do that over again. Amen. Amen. And then it said the third, and he gathered them out of the land from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Yes. They wandered in wilderness in the solitary way. There was no found no city to dwell in. Israel during their captivity or Israel during the time they were exiled because of their wrongdoing. Because they wrongdoing, God allowed them to be in a place that they had no place to be at because of their disobedience. Yeah. And when you disobey, one thing about it is you learn at home. When you disobey, you should get what? Punishment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three, four, five, say yes. <laughs> but when you know when we grew up, those that had parents that disciplined you, that corrected you when you were wrong, mm -hmm. you should expect something when you did what? And if you didn't expect it, you said, I got away with it. You thought you did. Because you may have a parent that says, I'm just waiting on a good time. Or let it, what, build up? And when they build it up, what happens? Remember they did this? I'm getting you because of this. This. That. And that. They got you all one good time, so when they got you real good, what happened? You remember because they told you. They let you know, hey. Because sometimes they get you one, you forget about it. But when they, you started like, they, my father had a way of us, he looked at you stern like, mm-hmm. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. All right. Didn't have to do nothing. And you think about it like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. And I knew when I was in trouble because my father, every time he looked at me or looked at his son and he shook his head, he didn't have to say, he didn't have to open his mouth and say, that's like, mm-hmm, yeah. And I just was could expect it, but I, I didn't expect it right then and there. But when you knew it was coming, then you realize, my God, when he does get me, I'm going to be in trouble. Well, God had to do Israel like that too because Israel got to a point that Israel did wrong, they continue on doing wrong, continue on doing wrong, and then God will send judges to deliver them out of their wrongdoing, redeem them from people that because of they were in trouble, being in captivity, God, they cried unto God. And the Lord sent a deliverer. He sent a judge to deliver them out of what they were in. And then God got those judges, got them people who Treated his people wrong. God didn't forget what they did. But he said, now, you, you did my people too wrong. Now, I'm going to take care of you all. But see, God allowed the enemy to captive his people because of what? Disobedience. And when you disobey, what happens? Consequences. Because there's always consequences when you disobey. Yes, it is. If you don't learn that now on Facebook, you need to know now. There's consequences. Right. Yes, if they ain't told you about that now, you need to learn there's consequences. Right. There's consequences things you put on Facebook. Yes, yes. it is, Lord. Oh, it, it's, nobody knows. Nobody's seen it. Next thing you know, it go viral and got a million, million people likes. <laughs> then all of a sudden, somebody knocking at the door because some of you did it wrong. Yes. You hear me? But, but, but all the information that 
Israel did, God allowed the captain to captain because of their disobedience. They wondered because God, they had no land because they were disobedient. God allowed that. They wandered in the wilderness and assaulted, the and they found no place to dwell, city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainting in them. And there was, this is what they did. They cried yes. unto the Lord in their, trouble. in their trouble. And he delivered them out of all of their, it said, not just out of their distresses yes. when they cried unto him. God heard him. God heard everything was going on. They was in pain. They was hurt. But God heard that. And God said, I'm going to send, I'm going to send some relief. Amen. When Israel was down in Egypt and all that the taskmasters were putting on them, Pharaoh was making their hard job, things they were doing, making it hard. And they cried to God. And God sent and deliver. He sent Moses down there. And then Moses brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they were still complaining. Somebody do something for you one day, and, you, and they deliver you out of the situation, and all of a sudden, you're still complaining. You're not appreciative of what's going on. You got in the wilderness, oh, wish we'd be back in Egypt. Wish we'd be back that way, because at least we had bread to eat. Then, then, then God, Moses interceded on behalf of them, and then God sent what? Bread. Yes. Manna. Yes. Oh, we need some meat. God, we need some meat. God sent them a quail. And you think about it. Everything they cried to God, God said, hey, all right. But then when they were stiff-necked and hard-headed, God said, all right, I told y'all to Calm down, but y'all don't want to follow instruction. You want to do it your way. But so God allowed things to happen because of their disobedience. Even in uh, at this time, when there's things that we've been told not to do, and we do it anyway, and you know it's wrong to do, what happens? Let's break it down to driving and speeding. You got one amen out on that. When you are driving and they tell you the speed limit is 55 or 70. Somebody telling themselves right now. And then when the police officer or the state trooper stops you, your past can't help you with that. And when he began to write you that ticket, pastor won't be there. Because your name, he asked for your identification. He don't ask for pastor Edwards' identification. But he asked you for your driver's license. And then he come back and you, and it, this is funny how they give you, and then they tell you what happened. Because then they really scold you at the time because you were speeding over the limit. Because they begin to tell you. Just like your parents do you when you, you did wrong, right? Because when they tell you you did wrong, they explain. Even when you, listen, listen. Anyway, you was getting a whooping. I don't know y'all know about that, do y'all? Because I'm talking to the right people. Even when they was getting you, hitting, getting that switch, or that belt, and they were applying the rod of collection to your gluteus maximus. And they were hitting that point where it hurts, where you sit down at. It was hurt, didn't it? And when it hurt, you like, you couldn't sit down, couldn't you? When you really got a real good one. No putting extra clothes on. <laughs> Didn't y'all try? I got two people, three people said they tried it. 
But no matter stuff that you try to put to cover up, works. Because when your father realized it was, he felt it, he didn't tell you, go take it off. Or you got it worse. Y'all ain't going to like me today. Because when it does happen, and it applies, then you realize you begin to cry out, please. I won't do it no more. I know you won't do it no more. Can I get a witness on that? Please. I'm sorry. It won't ever happen again. He said, I know it won't happen again. But when that happens, then you recognize that you got the point. He got the point across. Mom and daddy got the point across what they were doing. And they waited and waited, but all of a sudden, you decided to do it again. <laughs> then they put you on punishment. I don't know what punishment was, because there, there was no punishment. My, there was no kind of punishment. You can't go outside. You can't do this. You can't do that. You got that and also another whooping. Just to reinforce what I was just saying. But every time Israel did that, God has allowed that. That's why I'm let you know. God had to do it to them. He would do it to you. Yes. Though he loved, he will what? Chastise. If God didn't love you, he would just let you go on and do what you want to do. If mom and dad didn't care nothing about you, they would just let you do what you do. They let you get in trouble. And I don't care nothing about them. They, hey, hey. But they love you enough to want to see you go the right way. Yes. And God did that for Israel. Mm -hmm. But Israel got hard-headed, stiff-necked, like some people do today. Yeah. Don't want to listen to nobody at all. Can't tell them nothing at all. And they continue on doing the same thing and think they're going to get the, uh, different results. You in in jail, you out of jail. You know what it was, but when you went in jail, what you did. Now you in jail again. You didn't learn a lesson from the first time you went in jail? My brother, my father took, took my brothers them down to the jail in Gary. And he said, you end up here, you won't be, you end up here, call something you did, you won't be kidding out. Y'all said that's harsh. But when the person had to take their money, and bear you out of jail. They're hard on money. They clothing you. They making they making sure that you got a roof on your head, a bed to sleep in, food to eat. And then you and, and then they gotta go spend some money to get you out of jail. And then when they tell you this, you won't listen. But you have to learn the lesson, the hard lesson of life. Because they said, well, can you come down and get me out? No. Parents, y'all say they harsh. Oh, they read, they mean, they this and that. They mean what they said, they say what they mean. But when you don't follow instructions, this was happening. Israel did the same thing. God had redeemed them. And we are redeemed by the Lord, amen? Yes. Jesus Christ redeemed all mankind, amen? amen? And when he did that, he did it with a cost. Yes, he didn't do it just to be doing something. But he did it with a cost. Redeem is atoning for a fault, mistake, or a state of being redeemed or delivered or being rescued. Have we been rescued before? Yes. You know, it's not only when you're in a swimming pool and you can't swim in four feet and you're five foot five, but somebody, lifeguard, uh, rescued you because you're what? You can't swim. But when you're being redeemed or rescued for something, you appreciate that person, don't you? 
Don't you appreciate it when that person saved you? Don't you, you appreciate when that person out you in the, in the lake or you out there swimming and all of a sudden somehow or another you stop, you can't do this and that and you say, I help! You cry, don't you? Because you are in distress and you want some help. Because you're saying, hey, even the, be the goodest swimmers, the best swimmers get in trouble sometimes. And when they get in trouble, what happens? They call out for help. And they hope that life God is out there doing his job and not looking at the young ladies. Don't they? Can I be real with y'all today? Because if he's not looking, you're in trouble. But Christ looked for out us all 2,000 years ago. He looked out and saw that we're going to need to be saved. He went out and saw that something was going to have to happen to redeem man back to God. Yes. So he did this thing. He said, Father, I'll go. Yes. I'll go and redeem man back to you. Because yes. enemy wanted to destroy you. See, enemy has a mission. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not your buddy. He's not your homie. He's not your friend. He's not neither not one of those things. He's your enemies. And you have to recognize what the enemy is. My father-in-law and some other will tell you when we were on board the ship, we knew the enemy because they had a different flag than the United States of America. They were not friend. We knew who they were. We saw their flag. We understood who they were, and they understood who we were. And, and sometimes we are considered their enemy because we have more freedom than we have in other countries do. Because people are rallying for you to just be in bondage. They don't want you to be have free will and free thought. They want you to do it like robots. You do what I say and say what I, and do and do what I want you to do, just like slaves. But the Lord freed you from the bondage of the enemy. That's why he redeemed you through the blood of the lamb. Without the shedding of the blood, there was no redemption. Because he had to shed his blood. And when he shed his blood for you, that's when he redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. The Old Testament is talking about how they had to make atonement for the sins of the people. They had to go every year to make atonement. But they had to bring a sacrifice. There was no human sacrifice, but they had to bring a lamb, they had to bring a goat, they had to bring something that was without was spotless, without any spots at all. And they had to bring, they, 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 were, uh, they didn't have no livestock, they had to bring a dove, a turtle dove, something to make atonement for. And then they make the atonement. The priest went there before the Lord and the, they atoned their sin. And then what happened? They went back doing back again. But they also knew they had to come back again every year to do that. But Jesus Christ gave the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. He said he came and preached on this world for three years. Let you know there was a better way. And there is a better way for you unless you recognize that you have been redeemed. Yes. And when the Lord redeemed you, you shouldn't want to go back out oh God. into the world again. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to you for a minute? Because no, sometimes people just, they get straight and then all of a sudden they go back out again. Oh Those that remember, y'all that had dogs and this is y'all on Facebook know this, that a dog will vomit and go, go back to his vomit and Y'all don't like that, do y'all? But people do that. A dog does it, and people go back and pick the same stuff back up again they, the Lord delivered you from. If God delivered you from something, why go back out there again? Because he made a change in your life, you ought to want that change to stick. Because you've been redeemed from the Lord. Therefore, any man be in Christ, he is a old thing pathway. All things come what? We're not doing the same thing the world does. We're not out there smoking and drinking. 
doping, lying, backbagging, talking too much with his mouth. Because sometimes we can say too much with open our mouth and say too much at all. If you ain't got nothing good, say don't say nothing at all. That's what they told me back in the day. But sometimes, whoo, Jesus Christ. Some people just talk, talk, talk. Just hear they say talk. And when they get in trouble, then they're like, oh, did I? I've learned this in the military. Loose lip slinks. What does that, what does that mean to y'all? Talking too much causes you to spit out something that you didn't even know. Some secret. That's why they can't keep get can't hear it. Because if you can't hold water, you don't need to be telling nobody nothing at all. Because you tell somebody this, you know what? So and so, because you know, this is the thing, y'all. Listen to this. This is the thing. If you don't tell them not to tell nobody, what happens? Don't they? Don't tell don't, don't I'm telling you in secret. And you know who you told it to. That's right. That's right. Next time they told the person next to him and the truth they got back to it, the story that I told the person and didn't get back the right way. Because believe me, if I want you to know something, I'm going to tell you something. And that's why it's important. Put a hush in your lips. Don't always talk all the time. It's good to talk when you need somebody talking to you, but when you sometimes people got the gifts of gab. And when they can talk, they love talking so much. I mean, they got they know about every conversation about what goes on in every place else. But when you know how to keep this under control. You help people out. Even though you hear some, somebody said this, that's not, how I, that's not how a pastor ever said it. I ain't trying to silence nobody. But I want you to know that when you begin to talk, you can stir up stuff. Look at our lesson today. You can stir up stuff and create problems. But when God redeems you from the hand of the enemy, then you have the right to say, I'm redeemed. That I will, well, I've been bought with a price. That Jesus saved my life. Because if you don't say it, if you don't believe what you're saying, then you can't say something. But when he redeems you, you are redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I was just thinking about everything that we had to do when we growing up these songs that used to be pop up. And, you know, it's important for us to recognize that Christ is our redeemer. He redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Because God sent his son. And who is his son? Jesus. His son died. His son, if y'all ever look at the passion, he was beaten. The stripes on his back. Metal, metal stripes. Metal things embedded in that Hit, they hit his back. And then hit and pull. But he thought about you and me. He took all that whipping for me and you. Would you do that for somebody else? No. Yeah, I know y'all wouldn't. But he loved us enough for God saw the world that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes him should not perish. We have everlasting life. I'm not going to take a beating for you that you should be take yourself. I can't die for you. Christ already died for you. But when you don't let Christ come into your heart and accept him as Lord and Savior, you are saying, I'm all right with dying and going to hell. Are you saying that? Oh, I don't need to... I'm already saved. I got saved at an early age or baptized at an early age. Come on. Let me just break this down. If you've done something that you need to repent, you need to repent. 
and ask him to forgive you. Because if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from what? Christ ain't like your buddies. You know you had some drinking buddies. You remember when they would talk. But when Christ come into your life, he changed the situations. He changed your life for the better. Amen. You don't have to worry about that problem again. He's not there worried. About, you don't have to worry about that situation no more. But just like in Isaiah 53rd chapter of Isaiah, he was oppressed. The fourth verse said, surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we can claim what? Healing. Because every time they hit him, it was for us. Every time they beat him, it was for us. For your healing and for your deliverance. Oh, we like sheep have gone afraid. We turn every way to his own ways. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity to us all. All that happened when they smote the shepherd, the sheep went astray. But God allowed that. All the iniquity was laid upon Jesus Christ. It wasn't laid on Muhammad. It wasn't laid on Buddha. It wasn't laid on nobody else but Christ Jesus. The, the iniquity of us all was laid upon him and him alone. Amen. Amen. He was oppressed. Yes. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and a sheep before his shear is done. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus didn't say, hey man, I ain't taking no more licks off of you. I'm not taking more licks off of you. He didn't do none of that. But he was thinking about you and for me. He didn't say a mumbling word about nothing. When the lamb again we had to get a kill, he doesn't say nothing. He go ahead and take what he's doing and go about his business. Or he dies and that's it. He don't matter, you know, a goat. A goat knows what's going to happen. And he knows that he's something about to happen. So he put up a he put up a real fight. But a lamb doesn't do that. He was taken from prison, from, from prison into judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transfer of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was there anything, any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put on him Put on him grief. Put on he shall make him a soul a sin offering. He shall see his seed and belong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper him. He shall see the veil of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant be justified many. He bear the sins of many people. Therefore I will divide upon him the petition portion of the great. And he shall be divided the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul yes. unto death. He was numbered with the transgressor, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressor. Christ did all of that for us. Amen. That blood, blood that was shed, yes. Yes. that redeemer, blood. Christ, the redeemer, that redeemed by shedding his blood. The sacrifice had to be a lamb, but that. Lamb had to sacrifice and be killed, didn't he? Blood had to be. And then they had to, at the time of when Israel came out of the land of Egypt, and he told them to sprinkle the doorpost with the blood. And when you sprinkle the blood over the door, the death angel will pass. Because that was from the foundation of the world. Jesus did it for me and for you. The Redeemer. Amen? Amen. 
all that he did because he redeemed us from the enemy. He didn't recognize, you recognize that he was redeemer and he redeemed us from everything that the enemies tried to, which means he restored you. And also he will restore you back yes. to where you were. Yes. But you have to make that choice of yourself. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Who the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Have you been redeemed? Do you know as your Lord and Savior? Or you just talk about, yes, I know him. I know the man upstairs. The man upstairs got a name. His name is Jesus. And God his father. Amen. He's not the man upstairs. Let's get it right. They got names just like you got a name. Because if you never call his name, he's like, well, I don't know who you're talking about. The man upstairs, who, who's upstairs? I live in an apartment. The man upstairs is Joe that live upstairs, but it, it, that's his name. But if you know his name is, then you ought to say his name. Because he redeemed you from the enemy. Amen? Maybe I'll stand. Help the word encourage your heart and for us to recognize that everything that's been done. Amen? But as I was thinking about this song, It said, I want to see the blessed face of him that died for me. Sacrifice his life for my liberty. He said, I want to see the blessed face of Jesus who died for me. Sacrifice his life for my liberty. Then one verse said, he saved my life. He said he didn't have to do it. He paid the price before I ever knew it. And this is why it's important that he thought about us thousands of years ago. When all that had happened, somebody needed to die. Somebody had to. In the year King Uzzah died, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. As I began to tell him that I couldn't, can't do this, I can't, I can't redeem. But then there was one that says, "Send me, I'll go. Prepare me a body, and I would go back and redeem men back to you." And Jesus was the only one that could do it. Amen. I want to see the blessed face. Don't you want to see Jesus' face? Don't you want to see the face of Him that died for you? I want to see him in peace. But I want to see him. I ain't going to see Muhammad. But I'm going to see Jesus. The one that died for me. The one that bled on the cow of the cross. For me and for you. I want to see his face. He's the only one that sacrificed his life. He's the only one that gave his life for you and for me. So I want to see his face. And when I see his face, I know that's my redeemer. But I got to see him in peace. I can't be doing this and that's my well. I've seen the Lord. But I want to see him face to face. Because he knows who you are. He sees who you are. But I want to see him face to face. Amen. If you don't know Christ in the pardon your sins, you need to know him as your Lord and Savior. First lady was talking to our young, young people on today. It began in their class. And it was something that I learned from my grandfather, the late Sunday school superintendent. Jay Owens. And he began to sing this song. It says, Come into my heart. Come in. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to say. Come in. I need you. I need you. I need you right now. Lord Jesus, I need you today. I need you always. I need you.
Jesus. Word of God says this. God loved us that he sent Jesus Christ to die for us. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse it from all unrighteousness. And then he doesn't remember it no more. He don't remember what you did. Because he's God. He's not going to keep throwing it at your face all the time like your, your friends, your so-called friends. But he's going to wipe the slate clean. Remember it no more. And that's why it's important for you to recognize that he keeps secrets better than anybody else can. He knows everything about you. You think you got a secret that he don't know? Because he knows everything about you. He knows what you did yesterday, the day before, and he got records. But all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me my sins. I've done wrong. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. I confess that I've done wrong. I fell short of the glory of God. Come into my heart. Come in with me today. Come and abide with me today. And be with me always. Come into my heart. And according to the word, yet thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Raised who from the dead? Jesus Christ from the dead. The Bible said, thou shalt be saved. How easy is that? How easy is that? It's to say, forgive me, Lord. I've sinned. I feel short. Forgive me, my, I've done wrong, Lord. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Because he's a, it will be your personal Lord and Savior. He comes in and sup with you. He comes and leads you, God. And then when he comes in, he makes a difference in your life. Amen. Is there one today? Say, come into my I need you. today being redeemed we thank you Lord God you are our redeemer you are redeemer of the world today you shed your blood for our sins that we may have a right to a tree of life Lord touch the heart soul and mind you people right now save that sinner Lord God save that backslider let them come up with repentance and know you as a Lord and Savior Lord let them know you that you are the Savior of the whole world and there's no other name on the heaven world about we would say than the name of Jesus Christ. Touch the people right now, God. Break a backslide in, send them in repentance on their heart. Touch heart, soul, and mind. And we give you the glory and honor and praise. Those that are sick and afflicted in their body. Now, Lord, we ask you to touch right now by your spirit, by your power. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let healing virtue power overshadow them. Let the healing virtue power of the Holy Ghost overshadow them now. Touch them now. And deliver in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Come in to say, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in to my heart, come in to my heart, come in, Lord Jesus. Amen. We just thank God for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our pastor. Amen. Delivering the word. Amen. And I, I thought about it, that song, and it's a sweet little melody. Amen. Because you know what? Jesus is sweet. And you know what? Out of all the things, the praise team brought it out beautifully. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. And then our pastor brought that, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is a time to really get serious. 
Jesus. Amen. This is a time that don't, all that stuff that we used to do, and it doesn't mean anything that we did. He said, I will forgive you, Amen. but you got to ask. Yes. And I just thank God for that. I thank God because I had to ask. Amen? Amen. I had to ask the Lord to save me. I had to ask the Lord to forgive me. I had to ask the Lord to help me. Amen. And I'm still asking him, Lord, help me. Yes. Lord, keep me saved. Amen. Because that enemy, he wants to come in. Yes, he, he wants to come in and afflict you. He wants you to think the wrong thoughts. He wants you to th do the wrong type of things. He wants you to pick up and, hey, things you used to do, he wants you to go back and start doing them again. If you've been delivered from cigarettes, you stay away from cigarettes. You were an alcoholic, you stay away from alcohol. You are a womanizer, uh, get you a wife. You you like you want a, a husband? Get don't go for no boyfriend that wants those benefits. Get you a husband. Wait on God and say, Lord, I desire to have a husband. And want you watch God. Amen. He will do it. We need to lift up the standard. Amen. I know these people are doing everything they want to do. But there is, if there's going to be a redeemed, he's coming back. Jesus is coming back. And we need to really do what he said. Somebody said, I just want to be obedient. I want to be obedient. Amen. Amen. We thank God for everyone that's here today. Thank God for the words. And we want you all to continue on watching us on Facebook as well as our YouTube channel. Thank God for everyone our business here today. Thank God for everyone Thank that's God here for that you. came in the sanctuary. Amen. Uh, Thank God for you being here. I hope something was said to help you along the way, encourage Amen. your heart. Um, and we want you to come back and be a part and come back and be a watcher on Facebook. Saint as they Timothy. said, St. Timothy Tabernacle. Yes. Come to our Bible band uh, on Tuesday night. Amen. Our Friday night teachings, whether it be YMCC, CWC, YWCC, all in Mission Department and YPWW. Amen. Come back, amen, because we're going to encourage you because we're trying to get you from here to what? Glory. Amen. To heaven. And help up get to heaven. We want you to know. Amen. There's a way. And you got to get to get to amen. heaven, but you got to follow what the word of God says. Amen. amen. We love you. Love Christ Jesus, and God bless your heart. God bless you. Come into